Finally, we come to the N in PLN, which is network. Now we use the word network all the time in our everyday dialogue and speech, but it's really important for us to understand exactly what we mean by a network when we're talking about a PLN. A lot of the time, in terms of online learning, uh, the word community and the word network are used synonymously, but they actually represent different things. So I've put together a table which compares learning communities and learning networks. And whether or not they're online or offline, these features are what differentiate each social structure. A learning community has an intentional structure and is made with a series of strong ties, which basically means that generally in a community, people know each other, but the membership is known and there's a high level of trust and reciprocity within the relationships uh, in a community, generally speaking. These people have come together in a community for a shared goal. There are lots of advantages of learning within a community. And one is that there's a sense of support and security because you have a shared repertoire, a shared language and shared understanding of culture and uh, different ways of working because you know each other and have stronger relations with each other than, uh, than you would with a, working with a stranger or someone you weren't familiar with. And there is also a sense of mutual accountability because everyone is working towards the same goal. And so if everyone shares that goal, they all have equal amount of reason to work towards it. There are disadvantages though of working within a learning community and that is uh, that there is a potential for a really inward focus to develop where new ideas or new voices from outside are rejected and that can lead to a learning community becoming an echo chamber or uh, for homophily to develop. In a learning network, the learning structure is more organic and undefined. It generally develops as it goes along and it grows in an organic way. It's not planned or structured uh, by any particular person or by any particular group of people. It features strong and weak ties. And what that means is there'll be some people in the network that you might know, you might know them quite well even, uh, and if you were working just with those people, you know, well, it would may be more like a community. But in a network, there are those known people, but also there might be people in your network who you don't know very well, who you may have connected with on the basis of uh, something that they have shared once, and beyond that, you don't know anything else about them. And that's okay, because a network is much more flexible and the membership is always changing. So if you think about uh, the people that you might follow and who follow you on Twitter, you wouldn't necessarily even be able to list all of those people uh, by name or describe where they work or what they do. Uh, and if they decided to stop following you or if you decided to stop following them, it wouldn't be a big deal. Whereas if you were in a learning community, say at school, and someone decided to leave the community, it, it would that person would be missed. The goals, as we've talked about with the personal learning network, are personal. So basically each person has developed their own network and is working within a network for their own purposes. And so even though you may have the same goals as someone else within the network, you've come to those goals by yourself and you're pursuing those goals for yourself and by yourself. The advantage is that a network is able to meet your own personal or egocentric needs. So it doesn't matter if no one else is interested in what you're wanting to achieve, you can collect the information and meet the different people and combine the people and information in ways to meet your learning goal. And so you're not waiting for a whole group of people to be interested in that particular topic that you are. Also, because you've got access to um, weak ties, those people who might just float in, share something and then disappear, you are able to um, perhaps identify more innovative ideas and take on new perspectives. And that sort of combats that inward focus that can happen in a community. Unfortunately, though, because of the uh, flowing organic nature of networks and because they can be quite large, there is a lot of potential for an overwhelming amount of information, which I'm sure you've experienced when you've engaged with social media. 
And it can be really difficult to find the high quality learning from all of the noise that's coming. And so there are certain strategies and things that you need to develop and certain literacies that you need to develop in order to make the best of the learning that happens in a network. Also, because you're following your own goal and, they, and it, you're quite self-directed, the learning can become quite ambiguous. And unless you are very explicit about what you want to learn and pursue that uh, quite explicitly, it can be easy to lose focus and go off track and start following different tangents of learning. Whereas in a community, you tend to keep each other on track a little bit more. So when we put uh, the features of the personal learning network all together and compare them to how the features of the connected learning framework are described, um, we can see that um, the personal learning network is a social space that's supported and extended through social software where people can connect with others and interact and access a wide range of information. They can develop strong connections which offer them support and validation and they can also connect with people from diverse backgrounds who they may not know as well but who might contribute new and exciting ideas and perspectives. A PLN is formulated around the learner's own context their own professional interests and their own personal learning goals. And it has properties which reflect those of the connected learning framework in that participants are actively involved in constructing and co-constructing knowledge when they participate in dialogue and content curation, critique, feedback and reflection. Uh, they can situate across a multitude of contexts and platforms. You can see that learning through a PLN can spread so that you're not just interacting with people through one social space, for example, Twitter, but you might use a number of different tools in order to access different people and ideas, different types of resources and information, and you might draw those together in order to meet your own personal needs. And usually a PLN is situated in social software that's openly networked. And this means there's low barriers for entry and many different ways to express yourself and your learning. So you might decide to create a podcast to express what you've learned. You might create an infographic. You might access information from blogs rather than accessing it from a traditional uh, journal article. You might be able to create, um, there's, there's no limit to the multimedia and the, and the resources that you can access and create uh, because of the openly networked nature of these resources, of these platforms. PLN connections also have varied levels of expertise and experience, which is really fantastic because it means that there are opportunities for you to mentor and to be mentored. There's also a do-it-yourself mentality because there are no real teachers per se. You learn through trial and error and through searching through information to help you. And the information and connections are constantly changing. So the learning opportunities are ongoing and the challenge is definitely constant. So let's have a look at my own PLN map. I've tried to connect the different tools that I use with the different areas of learning that I explore through my PLN. There are many different processes and strategies that I undertake as part of my learning. I search for information, I share that information that I find with others, and I also share the content that I create. I connect and talk with individuals, some of whom I know well and some of whom might be a complete stranger to me. I work collaboratively on documents when I'm invited and I openly reflect and discuss my thinking through my blog. I create curated collections of content, either for my own use or to use as information packages when I'm teaching. And I use the curation of others to discover new resources and new connections. I connect with different groups of people for different learning experiences, although there's a lot of overlap with many people being interested in similar concepts and topics that I am. I would consider my PLN to be a connected learning environment. So that basically sums up uh, a lot of the information that I wanted to share with you today. Thank you for spending this time with me. There's a lot more practical information about different tools and how to use different tools. And uh, we can talk about that other times. Also, I would encourage you to look at my blog because I have blogged a little bit about some of those more practical aspects of PLNs. 
So thank you very much and have a lovely evening, afternoon, morning.